नमस्ते जय हिंद द तमिलनाडु गवर्नर सेड दैट सेक्युलरिज्म और द वर्ड सेक्युलर इज नॉट अ भारतीय कॉन्सेप्ट इट्स अ वेस्टर्न कॉन्सेप्ट एंड दैट ट्रिगर्ड क्वाइट अ लॉट ऑफ डिबेट बट टू ट्राई एंड गेट अ पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन हु वी आर एज भारत आर वी सेक्युलर सोशलिस्ट एज अ रिपब्लिक और आर वी धार्मिक इंक्लूसिव एज अ रिपब्लिक लेट्स ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड हाउ वी शुड डिफाइन आर सेल्व एंड शुड एवरीबडी पॉलिसी मेकर्स पीपल एट लार्ज नेताज एवरी वन लॉ मेकर्स एवरी वन गिव दिस अ सीरियस थाट और हैज़ आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन डिफाइन द वर्ड सेक्युलर डिफरेंटली टू हाउ द वर्ड सेक्युलर इज यूजली अंडरस्टूड जॉइनिंग अस नाउ प्रियम गांधी मोदी एंड आनंद रंगनाथन नमस्ते जय हिंद थैंक यू वेरी वेरी मच वॉट्स योर पोजिशन वेन गवर्नर आर एन रवि सेज दैट सेक्युलर इज अट इज अ वेस्टर्न कॉन्सेप्ट Bharat was not secular Bharat is not secular is what something Dr Bhimrao Ramji Ambedkar also said this word secular itself was debated in the constituent assembly discussions and that's why it was never carried in the original constitution so priyam gandhi modi <clears throat> quite honestly my base position on this topic is that uh, bharat is secular because it is majority hindu it is ingrained in our religious ethos to be secular um and that comes from once again the um, principles and ideas of tolerance that are ingrained in the religion of hinduism so which is why whether the word was inserted in our constitution later um you know it this is the ethos that we are tolerant to all faiths and to all religions um but yeah. here's the thing the word secular means separation of the church and state that's the western concept and it came because the catholics and the protestants were at loggerheads to say who will have the king's ear and somewhere i'm just putting it very loosely and in a precise manner somewhere it was decided that there will be secular that means church and state will be separate but bharat has it been somewhere where where the state and uh, the principles of life and faith have been separate or have they gone hand in hand priyam gandhi modi so then what do you mean by secular so so friend what do you mean by secular so i definitely think that the intention behind inserting that word secular was definitely more political and driven from these western definitions and giving us a new identity a new religious identity that wasn't our original religious identity and uh, you know contrary to what we are being blamed for now that we, that the bjp is trying to redefine the identity of bharat so that redefinition was being done when the word secular was inserted in the first place but uh, so so that's my position on it that um, uh you know yes principally we are secular because our religion allows us to be tolerant we were our identity was attempted to be redefined when the word secular was inserted in our constitution and the constitution was amended the preamble was amended and we are being attacked for it now when it was done much earlier hmm but secular does not mean tolerance priyam gandhi modi that's what i'm trying to say so but in bharat we are interpreting secularism as tolerance anand ranganathan where would you stand in a country whose first prime minister is a pandit first education minister is a molana a president is a gyani and a chief minister currently is a yogi how are we secular in the true meaning of it uh, hi anand and uh, hello to my fellow panelists uh, oh mother said duryodhan you are blood our blood stand with us so we may win no son replied gandhari yato dharmasta to jaya where there is dharma there is victory if you are righteous you will win never forget we belong to a land where a mother chooses dharma over her son this land has never been secular is not secular still this land is dharmic there are two issues here anand and like to delve into both of them very briefly what is secularism and are we secular look a system a discovery a characteristic may have its etymology or origin in the european or western thought of philosophy but that characteristic that discovery that system can and does exist in the east or anywhere around the world that the b form of dna is double helical is not a western concept it's a global concept 
the genomic dna of indians is also double helical hmm. darwin's theory of evolution is not a western concept it describes and explains evolution everywhere there is nothing called european double helical dna or indian double helical dna there is only one double helical dna similarly the concept of secularism may have originated in the west it may be understood as secularism being total separation of religion and state or church and state total but the meaning of this concept cannot be changed to suit a particular nation or ideology you are either secular or you're not and our state is plural not secular there are half a dozen articles and amendments and directive principles in our constitution anand that make it plural not secular in fact the word secular was inserted in our preamble by indira gandhi during the emergency it was absent from ambedkar's constitution but why do we feel plural is bad and that we must insist that plural means secular it does not our state declares itself to be secular but is not so you can have the state and the government give hard subsidies for decades use tax payer money to host grand iftar parties plunder state coffers to pay monthly salaries to thousands of malvis ask government run ugc to completely fund minority institutions that keep 50% seats reserved for christians step into overturn a supreme court judgment just to appease the muslims leech thousands of crores preferentially and exclusively from hindu temples sell off and control thousands of acres of hindu temple land spend hundreds of crores of tax payers money for the kartarpur corridor run madrasas and still be secular secularism for us is when there is no deity except allah and no one has the right to be worshiped but him amplified through a loudspeaker five times a day is creating amity but peacefully chanting hanuman chalisa while not denigrating anybody else's religion or god is creating enmity secularism is while reciting polythees are the worst of creatures near a temple is not provocative but reciting bhajman ram charan sukhdai one day in a year near a mosque is secularism is controlling and taxing only temples but not mosque it is fighting for muslims to wear hijab to school but beating hindus for wearing kalawa bindi and tilak it is respecting the supreme court shabri mala judgment but overturning the supreme court shabano judgment for how long anand just 30 seconds will we pretend that we are not practicing secularism but rather appeasement and pluralism anand if you truly believe that religion should keep out of state the corollary is equally applicable that state should keep out of religion but does it why is the state paying the surveyors of the waqf board why is the state paying salaries to maulvis why is the state giving interest free loans to set up shops on waqf land and mosque land why is the state running madrasas why is the state giving hundreds of crores to set up christian development corporations how can a state be secular and at the same time control more than 110000 hindu temples anand should we be secular yes but are we no but dr anganathan here is the thing now the word secular itself is not defined in the constitution it was forcibly inserted into our preamble the dna of bharat was changed or bharat's constitution was changed forcibly when democracy was largely in jail during the time of emergency these two words socialist and secular were inserted but these two words had been threadbare debated by some of the wisest minds who were part of the entire founding core of bharat itself agree disagree then what should we no. do should we seriously take a, a you know a back seat or perhaps cognizance and introspect and see do we really want because when you put the word socialist that means you are stopping bharat from becoming a market oriented nation yes you are you are defining bharat's economic policy forever yes can you do that can we do that or should we adopt and change with time and if you are already adapting and not uh, you know changing with time then is that word irrelevant brilliant questions both anand and please give me a minute to address both of those number one you're absolutely right as far as socialism is concerned in fact dr ambedkar very famously explained gave his reasons why socialism should not be inserted in the preamble these are wonderful um, as far as secularism is concerned i think we as a nation need to debate this and i'll tell you why as a darwinian atheist yes i think it is preferable if india was totally secular without any hypocrisy without any double standards i just explain to you why we aren't the fact of the matter is that india is plural there is absolutely nothing wrong in being plural but here is the thing while the religious aspects of hinduism are an offshoot of a way of life hmm. in the abrahamic religions the way of life is an offshoot of religion what follows is that hinduism is more adaptable because the ways of life change 
Now, when your starting point is plural, we are all accepting. That means we are also accepting uh, philosophies or religions that are predatory, that are othering, that are exclusivist, that are not as all accepting as Hinduism is. And that is where the problem comes. All religions are not the same. So while we may say that, yes, we accept all religions, we see what happens when we accept a religion that is predatory, exclusivist, and others, others, denigrates others. We see how through increasing demographic shift, sooner or later, the laws that are promulgated by that religion become the dominant factor of that community, of that area, and that is when the trouble starts. Hmm. So we have to have a very serious discussion. In hindsight, it is better to be secular than to be plural, because in India, being plural means accepting intolerant, intolerant philosophies and religions. So you are saying, let us be secular. But can we be secular inherently? We are inclusive in nature. We cannot have church and the state separate. Like I said, today there are there is a Mahant Balaknath and there is a, a barrister uh, Asaduddin OAC also uh, in the same ilk. Both have their own. There is a Yogi Adityanath. So there is a Hindutva philosophy that talks about a particular way of life. So again, somewhere with belief systems can cloud. There is an AIMIM in our polity which talks about another belief system. There is an AIUDF. So when we are having everybody part of it, the Hindu way of life has always been inclusive. Everybody... But the problem... Yes. Yeah. As I explained, Anand, the problem is not with the Hindu's way of life. The problem is with demographic shift as we saw in Kashmir. There were cries for stoning to death being accepted as a legal punishment in Kashmir. Can you believe it? So there are atrocities, legalized, uh, uh, you know, rules, laws against homosexuals will come into force. We have in Jharkhand already where schools, hundreds of schools, possibly more, are having not Sunday as a holiday, but Friday as a holiday. As I said, hmm. when you bring in, in the garb of pluralism, with good intention, predatory, exclusivist, othering religion and other philosophies, ultimately the nation suffers. The moment you make dharmic inclusive as part of the DNA of our, of our country, then everybody has to be inclusive. But then, then, not, then a certain section, that. the certain section of society cannot be exclusive. They can continue the to be dharmic. They can, they can continue to be. They, they can continue to be dharmic, but they cannot be exclusive. So anything which is exclusive in nature is against the DNA of our country. So then automatically laws will make sure that everybody is included. There is no exclusion at all. Priyam Gandhi Modi has a point. Yeah. Right. So I think the problem here is the privilege of the minorities that our founding fathers, because of their interpretation of the word secularism, has given this privilege to the minority, which has been exploited, uh, you know, over and over and over again. But who is a minority? Minority discuss, itself is not defined in our constitution, in absolute yes. numbers. Okay, so here let's take, first of all, Ananji, we've had this discussion before that Muslims consider themselves as minorities, but they are not minorities. They are the second largest majority population of Bharat. Okay, so let's let's get that point straight and their statistics are only growing. So they are not under threat in any way in our country at this point in time. All right. Having said that, I feel that because they've been defined as minorities, they've been given the certain status that they are a privileged population and they can bend, they can uh, take more benefits from, you know, the state. Um, they can follow their religion, you know, without any fear. And, you know, the rest of the country has to walk on eggshells so that no sentiments are hurt in any way. Unfortunately, this doesn't work the other way around. You know, every time there is, um, you know, some kind of um, uh, Hindu show of strength or which is the majority religion or if by chance the state gives some privileges to the majority religion, there is a huge hue and cry about it and they are not even inclusive to the majority uh, religion. No, so that that's exactly what I'm saying. So if you're fair. socialist and secular, then the second largest majority cannot pull the kind of benefits that they do. If you are Correct. socialist, so now, if you are socialist, then everybody has to get the same rights and the same leeway. There cannot Correct. be special so, considerations. If you have not Correct. defined minority, anybody can be a minority. Minority so is a religious minority. So uh, are the Lingayat Brahmins of Karnataka religious minority or not? 
Are four percent total Brahmin population in their country? Are they minority or not? Are Sikhs minority, Parsis minority, or is a fourteen to eighteen percent population minority? Where is it defined? Perhaps more than fourteen to eighteen percent. It's over twenty percent, and I've heard this from multiple, uh, you know, experts that it's over twenty percent now. Hmm. Um, having said that, every time, and this, every government is going to face this. That is. Probably center of right ideology. Every time you're trying to take corrective steps to stop this privilege of the minority, so that the rest of the country, including real minority populations, do not feel sidelined, then there is obviously a huge hue and cry about it. There are crocodile tears. There's such a big international so, media. So somewhere, so somewhere you are to, saying what's been yeah. done with the word secular in Bharat has also been done with the word minorities in Bharat. So yes. secular should not mean tolerance, but it means tolerance in Bharat, and minority should not mean only Muslims, but it being used loosely for Muslims in Bharat. Another thing. Yeah, thing? and any corrective measure to do that is not being allowed and is aggressively. Um, so then that know, is not socialist. Threatened. Yeah. Then that is not secular. So that is again violative of the forceful inclusions of these two words. Yes. So I, yes. I'm not I'm not trying to chase tails here, but point is that everything is linked to each other, uh, Anantra. So so then should we seriously give it a thought and say who are we really when we try to define ourselves? Absolutely, and may I compliment the Modi on your panel for being crystal clear. <laughs> I wish the other Modi was as clear as this Modi. The fact of the matter is she has defined it perfectly. When she talks about secularism, she has used the phrase. privilege that we have provided to the minority i e muslims that is exactly true in fact nehru was the one who initially said that in the event of a communal riot my preference first preference would be to blame the non muslims i'm quoting him this was the genesis of the upa communal violence bill that they wanted to bring nothing can be more draconian than that in effect what it said was exactly what ms modi is talking about privilege to the minorities it said in the event of any communal riot the only person held, held guilty would be the majority i.e the hindus even if it was in kashmir and when asked the people who wrote this bill they said oh this is to redress the balance that has happened of decades of injustice against muslims hmm. can you imagine this we were about to pass this law and if we look at the other for example waqf act for example place of worship act everything is loaded against the hindus in the name of preaching of victimhood or given privilege to the minorities so this is not secular at all absolutely not prem gandhi modi in india it is impossible to separate church and the state hmm. we are too interlinked the church and the state is too interlinked with each other but having said that i think every government needs to really authentically make an effort that The, the rule order that is followed for every religion is equal i don't think any any privilege needs to be given to any population based on uh, religion anymore and now we need to redefine the minorities in you know if at all we do need to give any special consideration of populations that are under 10% you know that truly don't have a say that find it difficult to have a say i really think we need to have this conversation because it is def definitely impossible to divide state and church uh, in india the way our ethos and our social fabric is at this point in time realistically no because in a lot of places even ancient times from times uh, immemorial if i may say that raj dharm and a raja were always had a raj guru right next to him and that raj guru also gave him the raj dand and it was also on the principles the core philosophical principles on which the state was defined and somewhere it was very strongly aided by the religious beliefs of those times or the way of life at those times so the raja going to to the temple raja going to a place of worship worshiping the ishta dev or or devi or whoever has been a time has been there always even in janaka's time when there was democracy or there was prajatantra because the raja who was called janak was elected by the people in mithila there was also the shiv dhanush and the shiv temple that was inside the palace or inside the residence of the janak or the ruler so can we really separate church and the state in our country if that's the case then are we really secular i I'm, i'm coming back to the same then how do we define ourselves what should we say is it time for us to have a serious consideration to go back to the original preamble of bharat's constitution 
the preamble that I mean, was agreed upon by our founding uh, you know leaders i will not even say founding fathers i'll say the founding leaders founding thinkers those who struggled for our freedom and those who worked hard to to get bharat free of the clutches of colonial rule should we go back because that, those constituent assembly conversations are in depth every single word was debated argued mulled upon philosophized and also crystallized priyam gandhi modi you're saying something and then anand ravi yeah yes um so you know finally we do have a prime minister that uh, flaunts his religion and perhaps also because uh, you know religion is very intrinsic to one's own growth and journey as well right it's not always uh, political or populist um, as people de define it unfortunately now we india bharat is at a place uh, in its growth story where it needs much more engagement and interaction with most parts of the world okay hmm. every time there is an attempt to flaunt hindu religion if you look at the articles if you look at academic papers if you look at think tank pieces that come out um, they are very scary for investors that would you like to invest in a hindu fascist regime The other thing is, would you say the prime minister flaunts his religion, or we have a prime minister who is unapologetic about their faith? I think largely that's very important. We are not trying to flaunt our faith; we are trying to be unapologetic about it under PM Modi. So there are there are two. It's very different. I'm not coming out and imposing my faith on you, trying to flaunt it like that. What I'm saying is, I am who I am, and I'm unapologetic about it. I am not going to shy from going into a mandir because log kya kahenge. that that right. that's the difference that's happened today yes please right. complete and then dr ranganath go ahead dr ranganath yeah all right now just a couple of points number one i think uh, again uh, not being patronizing at all anand but you know you can be having a secular state where your leaders can openly unabashedly without uh, uh, you know any shame or any any fear uh flaunt as you correctly said is not the uh, the right word follow their religion so the prime minister can as prime minister go to a temple inaugurate anything you want uh, i don't think that uh, the because of that the nation stops being secular i think the when the 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 laws of the country are dictated by a certain religion or when tax payers money is spent on things that are religious that is when you blur the boundary and mm. i think that can be sufficiently stopped but i come back to this problem again why india will suffer going forward it has already suffered in the past is because as we asserted we are plural we let in uh, mm. uh, you know predatory ideologies that either through legal means as it happened in kashmir because there were two constitutions or through extra judicial dictat tried to force what was their religion's uh, preamble mm. and preachings on to or remove the laws of this country shah bano judgment is a classic example mm. i mean the reason why it was overturned and the reason why we still don't have uniform civil code is because in the garb of being plural we are respecting draconian clauses of a particular ideology that should not happen because ultimately who suffers it's not just the hindus suffer The fact is, Shah Banu, a poor Muslim widow, suffers. Yeah. No, you you make fair points there, but again and again, I keep coming back that somewhere it's drilled into our consciousness that we are a secular country. We are not. Yeah. In the true yeah. meaning of the word, we are not. Are we an inclusive country? Yes. Are we pluralistic? Yes. Should we draw boundaries to this pluralism? Yes. Yeah. Should we define what our dharma as Bharat is? When I say dharma, not religion or faith. What's Absolutely. the what are the pillars of our sustenance? धारयते इति धर्म सो अनलेस वी डिफाइन दैट क्लियरली दैट विच विल सस्टेन भारत एज इट इज इट्स इंक्लूसिव नेचर इट्स फैक्ट दैट एनी बडी एंड एवरी बडी एज लॉन्ग एज ए अडॉप्ट दिस वे ऑफ लाइफ कैन एमेलगमेट एसिमुलेट अडॉप्ट एंड कंटिन्यू टू लिव हियर दैट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इट इज इट प्रोटेक्टेड अंडर आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन और करंटली आर दोज लाइन्स ब्लर्ड एंड शुड वी एज अ नेशन हैव एब्सोल्यूट क्लैरिटी ऑन दैट थैंक यू वेरी मच प्रियम गांधी मोदी हैड टू से समथिंग क्विकली येस बिफोर आई वाइंड अप 
Well, I just think that while all of this is absolutely important to define, even an inkling that this thought process has started to churn or like, you know, that this thinking is going on, it it creates such big chaos in the country because of, again, the privilege of this population and the, in, the ecosystem around it that, you know, that it has that, you know, very strongly supports it. That it is very, very difficult for a government there that is, does not have an absolute majority. There is a simple point. To really, even start thinking about a society. It. Society will get a ruler that it chooses. A society will get a, a philosophy that it adopts, and a society has to fight for what is its dharma. Point is that and there was a time when 30 percent were ruling over 70 percent, and those 30 percent still believe that they will come back and rule the 70 percent because the 70 percent are always divided and cannot do that. Now, is that philosophy going to change? The people of Bharat have to decide that. Across, across and faiths, I, across faiths, I, I, across faiths, people of Bharat have yes. to decide who are we really. That's where it is. And I, I, I just wish all movies thought like you. Uh, uh, I, I, I just I just wish that all Bharatiyas start having this conversation and start thinking about this. Thank you very much to the lady and the gentleman. Thank you, Thank you so very much. much. Thank, you. Thank you.